I'm going to take the topic from broad, as in diversity and global warming, down to more narrow, the space between us. And I'm going to talk about innate, an innate ability that we all have. And that's the ability to look at someone we care about and determine if they're sick or not. And a great deal of this ability comes from looking at the human face. Now, this ability to make an instinctual determination of whether someone is sick or not comes in particularly relevant in my chosen profession of emergency medicine, where healthcare professionals have to come into the room of a stranger and lean into a person's pain and determine if that pain is something that's trying to kill them or something that doesn't need anything in terms of fancy diagnostic testing. Now, to help understand this, I want you to come along with me for a minute on a shift in the emergency department. And you are the emergency physician making decisions for patients. You've got 20 souls on board. It's 2 o'clock on Saturday morning, and it is busy. 20 in the waiting room. Every patient that leaves the room is replaced by a more sick patient. They're announced overhead. Trauma alert, five minutes out. Medic code, 10 minutes out. You're working a trauma code. This is a thing characterized by lots of adrenaline and terse exchanges between your colleagues, uncertainty, sometimes hopelessness. You have to go out to a room, tell a family that their young son may never be the same again from a head injury. But then you have to immediately transition and go in and see this nice man who's been waiting to see you for an hour. He says he's got some chest pain. It sounds somewhat vague. You're not really sure his EKG looks normal. In talking with him, he tells you about his two kids, the fact that his wife made him come into the emergency department. You look at him and you say, he looks pretty good for 2 o'clock in the morning. He smiled at you. But you say to yourself, I'll be damned if I'm orphaning two kids tonight. Sorry, it's 2 o'clock in the morning, so excuse the language. <laughs> You're worried about type 1 error. It's missing this. A fatal, a fatal disease. This is a big blood clot obstructing the main artery coming out of the heart into the lung. It's a condition called pulmonary embolism. It can kill quickly, but you can detect it by looking at the patient's face. You have to go back now and spend way more time than you spent with the patient filling out this thing that can only be called the ridiculous medical record filling out numerous fields that just are there for billing. Nowhere on this medical record does it ask you what do I really think about this patient? What did I really see? It's not on the record. Here we'll order a bunch of tests. All of them cost a lot of money. At least one of them imparts a great deal of medical radiation. In the back of your head, you're thinking, I really don't think he needs any of this. But you do it anyway. You didn't think so because you looked at his face, this complex organ that has 46 muscles. It takes 23 of them to smile. All of them have nervous connection to the higher parts of the brain that are connected to more primitive parts of the brain that, of course, live inside the body and are connected to our vital organs, as this artistry shows. The heart and lungs are connected by nervous inputs to the brain, which then controls our face. A sick person has no poker face. You can see it on their face, and it's amazingly accurate as a diagnostic test. But sadly, this is the state of the art in medicine. The Wong Baker pain rating scale. And I love this blogger's interpretation of face number four. Huh? I never knew that about giraffes. <laughs> You're a medical system at work. Now, you can grade facial expressions using a scientific method, the facial action coding system, that gives a numeric score to each of the facial muscles. And you can use computer algorithms to determine whether or not a patient smiled or had surprise. And those expressions can be amazingly accurate at determining who does not have a life-threatening illness and who doesn't need all of those expensive tests or radiation exposure. But as the slide suggests, this is somewhat painful to do. It's not painful for the subject, but it's painful for my research assistants to calculate this very cumbersome score and to develop a computer algorithm that detects it. These are slides <coughs> or videos of research subjects who gave me their informed consent and we've done the facial action coding system on them that can accurately distinguish patients who went on to have threats to life and those that didn't. But I'll bet that you, looking at them, can make inferences about which ones were sick and which ones weren't. I can show these videos to anyone, not just a physician, even children, and they can accurately distinguish 
who's got a problem and who doesn't. Yet all of these patients had many diagnostic tests ordered. The important take-home point is that by using our instincts, physicians can determine whether or not there's a threat to life. But right now our system is not geared to be able to use that in a way that's useful for diagnostic testing. The major take-home message here is that our electronic health recording system, the way we teach, and the way we think about medicine needs to be re-geared more toward allowing physicians to use Gestalt interpretation. It enhances the connection between patients and their physician when I simply look at a patient's face. This has implications in teaching students of medicine. Not everybody is really good at it right away, but we should test for it because it's definitely connected to our ability to build empathy immediately with people. The face is connected to the body. It is a simple diagnostic tool. When I see your face, I see your wellness, and I see you. Thank you.